Okay, so today we will do uh, what's called uh, Fourier integrals. Uh, so what do you mean by the Fourier integrals? Uh, as usual, I like to remind you uh, of what we've done uh, in the previous classes. Uh, so we connect all the topics together. So we, we have like the full picture in our minds all the time. So remember, uh, by the way, this is the last topic uh, in this chapter. So after discussing uh, the Fourier series, so l let's just remember, uh, in this chapter, we did what's called uh, Fourier series. Uh, then after finishing uh, the Fourier series, uh, we did the Fourier transform. Uh, in Fourier series, we went through all the topics like Fourier series uh, after doing like the real Fourier series. So let me say the real Fourier series, the complex Fourier series, uh, Parseval's identity, then the odd and even cases. So when the function is even or odd, uh, something happens there. Uh, then Plancher, uh, sorry, then. Uh, Dirichlet, Dirichlet theorem. So just to remind you, Dirichlet uh, simply uh, says that when you plug the value uh, in the Fourier series, you get the average of the function at that that value. Uh, so for example, if the function is continuous, for example, uh, you get the same value as the function. So it's about the relation between the Fourier series and the function. Then we went uh, to Fourier transform we defined uh, what we mean by uh, f hat, the Fourier transform. Uh, then we talked about the inversion formula. We talked about a planchial theorem, uh, and we, we, we called it uh, Parseval's identity also, so planchial theorem. Uh, then we discussed the uh, f hat when the function is even or odd, and that gave us uh, the uh, sine transform, the Fourier sine transform, and the Fourier cosine transform. So basically, uh, what we did in both topics is like this. Uh, we did the complex Fourier series, the complex Fourier series. Uh, this is like doing, this is exactly like doing uh, the Fourier transform. The, so I'm, I'm just trying to connect every topic in uh, the Fourier series with every topic in Fourier transform. The complex Fourier series corresponds to finding f hat in the Fourier transform. Parseval's identity in Fourier series corresponds to planchial or Parseval identity in Fourier transform. The odd even cases in the Fourier series corresponds to the odd even cases in the Fourier transform and that gave us the Fourier sine and cosine transforms. Dirichlet theorem is basically the inversion formula because uh, Dirichlet theorem was something like this, that the, the function is equal to the sum of the Fourier series, something like this, okay? The inversion formula is, about, is, is the same thing, basically. It is like this. The, the two uh, forms are very similar. So the Dirichlet corresponds to the inversion formula. So if you look at these matchings, if we look at these matchings, uh, we can see, we can see that the real Fourier series does not have a match here. So what does, so the question is, what does the real Fourier series uh, correspond to uh, when we talk about the Fourier transform? This is what will be called the Fourier integrals. Okay, so today we will do this topic, Fourier integral, and the main re reason for that is to connect this with this. That's it, okay? Uh, so let's start. Uh, the Fourier integrals, uh, but again, uh, the the basic idea uh, in this part is Fourier transform. So I'm going to start with the Fourier transform. So let's recall that uh, if the function f uh, from negative infinity infinity to r is integrable, uh, we know that uh, f hat of omega, the Fourier transform is 1 over root 2 pi integral from negative infinity to infinity f of x e to the minus i omega x dx. We know this. Then, 
if f hat belongs to L1, we know that uh, the inversion formula says that the function, and please, uh, all the time, we mentioned this uh, many times, although we write f of x equals, uh, we mean the average. So this f of x means the limit from left uh, plus the limit from right over 2. So if, if you like, you can say if f is continuous. If f is continuous, yes, then f of x is equal to the 1 over root 2 pi integral from negative infinity to infinity uh, f hat of omega e to the i omega x d omega. So we have this equation, we have this equation. We have these two equations. This is the Fourier transform, the first one, the second one is the inversion formula. Now I want to look at uh, the inversion formula. I want to look at the inversion formula. Uh, so, so f of x is 1 over root 2 pi integral from negative infinity to infinity. So I'm looking at the second equation, okay? Now, what is the integrand? This is the integrand. It is f hat of omega times the exponential. But we know what f hat of omega is equal to, right? So f hat of omega itself is the integral from negative infinity to infinity. Uh, for what? Uh, for f of x e to the minus i omega x dx, all of this multiplied with e to the i omega x dw. But at this stage, this is very confusing. Okay, this is, sorry, we, we forget here 1 over 2 pi, root 2 pi. Okay, so this is very confusing because uh, we're using x as a constant with respect to the integral, but at the same time, we used x here uh, as a, a variable for the integral. So this is confusing, and that's why, that's why we need to change this x by something like t, for example. Okay, so this is just a dummy variable that we can play with, but we need to change it. We can't use x here and x there. Okay, so this is our integral. So basically, if you multiply the two roots, you have one over two pi, and now you have a double integral. So you have integral from e to infinity to infinity, another integral, f of t, e to the minus i omega t, e to the i omega x, d x, d omega, which is 1 over 2 pi integral negative infinity infinity integral negative infinity infinity now let's just assume assume uh, that we can uh, interchange the integral so I, I will write instead of writing dx dw uh, I will write dw dx okay just assume that we can do this just to explain to you the idea uh, so what is e to the negative i omega t? This is cosine omega t minus i sine omega t multiplied with e to the i omega x, which is cosine omega x plus i sine omega x. All of this dx d omega. Now I'm going to uh, switch the order of integration. So the limits do not change. They are the same. So we have f of t times, uh, if you multiply, you get cosine omega t, cosine omega x, uh, plus sine omega t, sine omega x. Then what is with i? You have minus i, sine omega t, cosine omega x, and the plus i, cosine omega t, sine omega x. All of this, dw now, dx. So now my first variable, uh, my first variable is uh, omega, okay, d omega. So if you're talking about omega, if you're talking about omega, as a function of omega, uh, this is an odd function, this is an even function. So when you multiply them, you get an odd function, and because you are as a function of omega, again, now I'm looking at the integral d omega, the first integral is done with respect to omega. Uh, so this means that the integral from negative infinity to infinity uh, is going to be zero. Uh, if you look at the other integral, uh, th th this one, it's the same thing, odd times even, so this is going to be zero, okay? Uh, and here, here of course, uh, we need to look at uh, this integral. Is it is it convergent to say that the integral is zero? In fact, this needs uh, further analysis. Uh, so basically what we do, uh, 
analytically, so we're doing things roughly just to show you the idea of the Fourier integrals. We're not in a math analysis course. That would be a different analysis, of course. Uh, but what's done, uh, what should be done is, instead of taking a negative infinity to infinity, because these integrals are divergent, uh, we would take a finite interval like negative L to L. So like we are approximating the integral from negative infinity to infinity by from negative L to L, then we let L tend to infinity. But for the purpose of this course as an engineering course, uh, it is fine to look at it this way just to show you the final formula. Uh, then, then if you look at, uh, sorry, if you look at uh, this term here, uh, both the cosines, they are both even, so their product is even. The sines are both odd, their product is even. Uh, so two terms have been cancelled, they give us zero. Two terms are uh, even functions, but when you integrate even functions from negative infinity to infinity, you get uh, double from zero to infinity, right? the uh, omega dx. And now the two is cancelled. Okay, and uh, this is equal to this by switching the integrals again. Uh, so now, uh, if you agree, if you just denote, uh, just imagine this quantity, the first quantity here, uh, and denote this by something, denote it by a of omega, we'll, we'll write this, okay? Uh, so if you denote it by a of omega, so this is the integral from zero to infinity, a of w or omega cosine omega x, if you denote the second integral uh, by b of w, so you'll have b of w sine w x or dx, so where, what is a of w? a of w is one over pi integral from negative infinity to infinity, uh, f of t cosine omega t dt, and b of w is the other integral. Uh, so basically, basically, uh, in the end, in the end, uh, if we if we just denote these two identities together uh, by star, so what is our conclusion in the end? So our conclusion, if you start with a function. Uh, that is uh, integrable on the interval negative infinity to infinity. Again, we're not dealing with a periodic function. We started with a function that's integrable on the whole real line. We used the Fourier transform. We analyzed all this, and then we reached the following. So if the function is uh, integrable, uh, then you can write the function. This is what we reached in the end. You can write it as the integral from zero to infinity or a of w cosine wx plus b of w sine uh, wx. This is what we reached, where a of w and b of w as an star. Uh, so this is what we called, uh, this is what we call the Fourier, the Fourier integral. Usually the a of w, b of w, we call them the Fourier integrals. Uh, and this is uh, f of x, this is like the inversion formula for the function. So at this stage, I like to remind you of our motivation. Remember, we started with the comparison between uh, the topics that we covered for the Fourier series and those for Fourier transform. And we matched every topic from the Fourier series uh, with something in Fourier transform, except for the first one. Remember, we couldn't find a match for Fourier, real, the real Fourier series. But let's look at the form we ended up with. So we reach this integral. So f of x is the integral uh, from uh, zero to infinity, a w cosine plus b w sine. How is this related? So let's see the relation between this and the real Fourier series. Uh, so remember, we call that uh, the real Fourier series. Uh, what is it? Uh, it is, a naught plus the sum from 1 to infinity a n cosine n x plus b n sine n x, right? And let me write f of x, assuming the function is continuous, okay? Because if the function is continuous, 
the function is equal to its Fourier series. So the Fourier series is this. Uh, what is an? An is the one over pi integral from negative pi to pi uh, f of x cosine and x dx, and bn is one over pi integral f of x sine and x dx. Compare, compare a and bn, compare a and bn with a w b w. You have the same form exactly. So a of w here, it is one over pi integral from negative infinity to infinity. That's the only difference. The a n from the real Fourier series is one over pi, but the integral from negative pi to pi. And the reason is the function here for the Fourier series was continuous, it was periodic. So if the function is periodic and you describe it on the interval negative pi pi, that's enough. But in our case, we're dealing with a function that's non-periodic, a function integrable on the real line. Uh, so you need the whole real line to describe the function. That's why we needed in this new presentation here, we needed uh, the whole real line for our integral from negative infinity to infinity. Then the bn, it is exactly like the b of w. They exactly have the same form, right? Then the Fourier series, if you look at the Fourier series and you look at the Fourier integral, let's say, uh, they are very similar except for the a node. So we observe that in, in, in this integral formula, we don't have an a node. It is, it's not there. It is not there. And that's what happens. That's it. So comparing the real Fourier series, and that's the reason, by the way, I didn't write the A node in, in my formulas here. Uh, so this is the comparison between uh, the real Fourier series and uh, the form that we must have if the function is not periodic. So what corresponds to uh, the real Fourier series is what we call the Fourier integrals. So that's it. So this is, uh, so the summary is if you have a function, you can write it. The conclusion you can write the function in terms of cosine and sine of course if the function was uh, was integral uh, so this is the what we call Fourier integrals and now of course you can apply this to to, to any integral function uh, for example uh, if the function was and again we need to have uh, integrable function so let's take this popular function it is not about the computations. If we take this function, let's compute the a of w. This is an integrable function, of course. Uh, what is a of w? It is very similar, again, to the previous computations, except for uh, negative infinity, infinity, except from uh, negative pi to pi. So this is uh, the definition. Of course, you can use the x if you like. So this is one over pi integral, but my function is zero outside this interval. So basically what's left is cosine wt dt, uh, and this is uh, one over pi, uh, what is the integral of cosine? It is sine wt over w from negative one to one. Uh, so this is uh, one over pi uh, sine omega, because you replace t by one minus sine negative omega over omega. Uh, so basically this is a two over pi sine w over w. This is the Fourier uh, integral, the first Fourier integral of, of this function. If you try to compute b of w, which is the integral one over pi, the integral from negative one to one sine wt dt, this will be zero because uh, this sign uh, is an odd function, uh, so this is cancelled. So what you reached in the end is that, uh, so after writing, so after finding a of w, b of w, what is my conclusion? My conclusion is that the function f of x is the integral from zero to infinity a of w, a of w, uh, cosine wx, of course plus b of w, we are dealing with, uh, with this form, plus b of w sine w x, but that's zero uh, dx. And again, again, this is not f of x. This is the average value of the left and right limits. Uh, so basically what this means is the integral from zero to infinity, 
What is a of w? It's 2 over pi sine omega over omega times cosine wx d omega. Sorry, this is d omega. Uh, this is equal to f of x plus. This is what we, what's meant even if we write. Uh, and by the way, even in text box, uh, we write f of x, but what's meant is f of x plus plus f of x minus over 2. Uh, and what is this? If you look at our function, uh, if you look at our function, uh, our function uh, is the rectangle. So this is negative 1, 1. And then outside this interval, the function is 0. Uh, and now you ask, uh, is the function continuous? Yes, between negative 1 and 1, the function is continuous, but outside that interval, uh, the uh, sorry uh, at the ends uh, of uh, the end points of the interval the function is not continuous outside the interval the function is continuous so basically we have kind of a three cases what are uh, these three cases uh, if x was between negative one and one without equality the function is continuous so this is equal exactly to the function which is one between these values when x is one or negative one you must take the limits from right and left over two, but we know this is this is one and this is zero. So the limit the limit from left is zero. The limit from right is uh, is one. For for the limit from left is one. The limit from right is zero. So if you divide, you get one over two. Uh, and then uh, when x is uh, outside, so when x is less than negative one, or when x is bigger than one, that corresponds to this part and this part. The function is continuous, so the integral is equal to the same value as the function, which is zero. So basically, what we reached in the end is a nice integral. We reached that the integral from zero to infinity for sine omega, cosine omega x over omega d omega. What is that? It is pi over two if x was between negative one and one. Uh, pi over four if x is 1 or negative 1, and it is 0 otherwise. We just multiplied. We took this 2 over pi uh, to other side. Uh, and this is a very nice integral. So now you can use the Fourier integrals uh, to compute uh, such, uh, such integrals. Uh, I like at this point, uh, just as a concluding remark, uh, to mention that we, we see in, in textbooks, we see many examples like this. So we see in the exercises, uh, questions like, show that this integral is equal to this. Show that. This is the question. Just imagine the question was, uh, show that this integral is equal to that value. Uh, so what we do is basically, uh, this integral is not easy to, to compute. So if, if you try doing this integral using the usual integration techniques like calculus, uh, you're not going to do it. There is no way we can do it. So to do this integral, we need to, some tricky methods like Fourier analysis, and this is like the Fourier integral. So what we do, in fact, is we take this function as our function f of x, we compute the Fourier sine integral and cosine integral, then we apply the inversion formula, and from this inversion, this is exactly what we did. But what is the difference? In the example, we were given the function, we applied it to understand the Fourier integrals. But even if this function wasn't given this way, and we are asked to find the this integral to show that this integral is equal to that value, we start with this function, uh, we find the Fourier integrals, we apply the inversion formula, we reach this form. This is how we do it. And of course, if this value was not given, so if you ask me, compute this integral, Without giving me the expected value, I can't do it. This is very tough. And the only way to do it, by the way, is uh, to go to complex analysis. Complex analysis is very rich. We can do integrals uh, like this. Uh, without complex analysis, if we need to apply the Fourier tricks, uh, then we need to be very familiar with the kind of functions that give us these integrals because we need to know if you want to compute this integral, you need to know what function you need to use in order to obtain this integral. And this is not easy to expect, unless, like you are very familiar, you solved hundreds of examples, and then once you see the integral, you can expect what form of functions uh, you must start with. I hope uh, this idea uh, is clear. So this is, by the way, this is the last main topic uh, in this chapter. Uh, remember, this chapter was about Fourier analysis, uh, which is composed of two parts, Fourier series and Fourier transform. 
uh, with this Fourier integrals. So as a, a last topic, uh, we, we add here uh, Fourier integrals. And now our chart is complete and we can match the real Fourier series with this. With these topics together, we finished the uh, chapter Fourier analysis. Uh, for next class, I hope I can do uh, some use of uh, the Fourier table, the Fourier transform table. Uh, so remember in Laplace, uh, we used to, re to remember all the formulas for the Laplace transform. And the, the reason is uh, the, the Laplace transform uh, formulas are really easy to memorize. Everybody memorizes them. For the Fourier transform, unless you are very familiar and you have used them multiple times, it is not easy to memorize the formulas. That's why usually with the Fourier transform, we have tables uh, that we need to familiarize ourselves uh, and how to use, to use them. So hopefully next time uh, we will uh, apply and, and see how to apply uh, the Fourier transform tables. That's it. Thank you.